This is going to be the beginning of our no dig potato bed. So I'm going to cover the whole bed in cardboard first. Then we'll put a layer of compost over it. Then we'll plant the potatoes in the compost and then cover the top with straw to keep the moisture in. So I'm gonna go and get some small bits, cover up the gaps, and then we're good to go with compost. You gotta pull all the tape off and the staples out. So this is a compost pile, mostly made from Carlos's uh, goats. The straw and goat poo that we got delivered last year has now composted along with all of our vegetable waste and garden waste and we've got a good pile of rich compost here to spread on the ground. I've got this new long handled shovel which while it's a bit harder sometimes to get a shovel load it's a hell of a lot easier on my back Well, that's eight wheelbarrowfuls of compost. I'm going to go and get my rake and rake it all out nice and level. See how thick it is. I'm not sure if I've got enough yet, but we'll see. I'm aiming for six inch. Well, it's a bit thin at this end, but I can put a couple of more wheelbarrowfuls on tomorrow morning. Then we're going to plant the potatoes. We've got our sack of potatoes to put in our no dig potato bed. Mary's here to help me today. She is the potato queen after all. How come you get to carry the camera and I carry 10 kilos of potatoes? So I carried eight wheelbarrowfuls of compost down yesterday and I got a few more to go. Oh, you did a lovely job. Well, about a metre and a half wide. About six metres long. Uh, it's nearly two metres wide at this end. We've got agria potatoes to plant. They're a main crop with yellow flesh and they're flowery. So if you're from Ireland, you'll have driven along the roadside and seen signs where people are selling potatoes, calling them balls of flour. And that just is music to my ears. So they're perfect for chips, roasting, in my mind, everything. For me, there is only one type of potato, and that's a flowery potato. And let's hope that we have better results than we had last year. Now the harvest isn't great uh, this year. Um... Isn't great. This year we've given them compost and they will be given water as an added bonus. Here we struggled to find anything less than 10 kilos. We went to four or five different suppliers last week and eventually we gave in one variety this year again. Oh, the last 
one is tough. I'll give her, I'll give these onions a wee bit of a weed too, Dan. <laughs> Just a little bit of a path, Dan. Yeah. Don't want to damage the sack. Oh, coming through the wheelbarrow. Okay. There we go. Undamaged. You know what? Now that the sticks are gone, I kind of want to keep walking on the onions. All right. So these are the potatoes. How many rows can we get along here then? Um, I don't know. We'll just see how we go. I think one. Three two, or four? Three. Yeah. Do the onions again. Oh, God. Round a foot apart, Dan. Yeah. Oh, there's wee raindrops on the potato. Yeah. I'm making little kind of ridges here, Dan. Uh -huh. So we don't waste the good compost. Well, will I start covering with straw? Yeah. So if you're wondering why we haven't chitted these potatoes, we just never did. We've always had success without chitting, except for last year when we didn't water. And nothing grows without water. We've been using no dig for about 12 years. And what I will say about it, it is very time consuming. It takes a lot of time to gather cardboard, to make compost, to cover with straw. All of these things are not the easiest materials to get. Um, we're making wood chip all the time. Our compost is coming in trailer loads from Carlos, our local goat herder. It's certainly not the easiest way to plant things but it does improve the soil over time. Generally it works. It reduces the amount of weeding, doesn't take it away completely. And our compost is made on the land. Some years ago in the last house that we rented in the UK, we had a garden where nothing grew and the grass that was laid had died. We created some no dig beds. We transformed the garden into a no dig vegetable garden. That first year we had production and we continued, we continued with that for three years. We were in that house for three years before we came to Portugal. On our allotment, we grew everything, no dig. We don't grow things in neat, tidy rows. I'm going up some more straw. Okay, thank you. I'm still talking. He's doing all the work. So Dan has done most of this work, as you've seen. Our compost is usually made from vegetable waste and biggish things. Uh, we don't have bays as such, we just have huge mounds. You can never have enough compost. Today we're going to have a look at the compost heap. Uh, it needs turning. It's been about a month since we last turned it. I'm going to drag this part of the compost over on top of all the fresh stuff. It is about two and a half meters long. About two meters wide. And 
probably on average about a meter high. So it's a fair size pile, but on a property of this size where we're trying to grow a lot of vegetables, we use the no dig method, so we need a lot of compost. What's in our compost heap? It's mainly straw and goat manure that the local goat herder brought us. But this pile is in absolutely bone dry. There's almost no moisture in it at all. When I last turned it, I dumped about half a tonne of water into it to try and get the moisture levels up. We're going to keep putting our vegetable scraps in and other garden waste into it and hopefully we can get the moisture levels up so that it composts properly. Right, back up the compost pile for this bunch of pokeweed. Chopping this big stuff up helps it compost better. We're keeping it covered with a tarp so that it'll help keep the moisture in. We're going to carry on composting. Right, you happy with this potato bed then? Delighted. And it's going to rain today. Yep. Um, the compost is really lovely and damp. Yeah, I'm delighted. So much happier than last year. And it was so much easier to plant this year. Yeah. That'll be because I sat at home while you did all the donkey work. <laughs> I think we need to do something with that space where the compost pile was. Yeah, well, let me tell you a legend of a secret. Might as well tell everybody. You got a bit of toothpaste on your face. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, one of my colleagues at Portuguese <clears throat> class told me that I might be able to get a lorry load of compost delivered. So I'm looking into that at the moment, mm -hmm. but it only comes in a 20, 25 ton lorry, which is a lot of compost. And it's great, the <laughs> idea of having all this compost delivered, but that means it has, it can only be delivered to the top of the land. And 25 tons of compost is an awful lot of compost to move around <laughs> the land. That's a lot of wheelbarrows. Yeah, so maybe we'll get a digger in to move it around the land. Yeah. Anyway, it's kind of something I said to Dan last night. I wish I hadn't have mentioned it because he's so focused on this lorry load of compost. I'm having nightmares about compost, um, but we can never have enough compost. We really can't. There's a lot of areas here on this second terrace. We could, we could just dump tons onto here to improve the soil and grow a lot more. You can't be Irish and not plant potatoes, whatever the result. So that's the reason why we're going again this year. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Potatoes! <laughs> it's just started raining, so that's time for us to go. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. That's my onion.